Good afternoon and welcome to The Rundown. I am your host, Captivating Christian, and here are some of your top stories for today, the 18th of September. In politics, a judge blasts DeJoy's intentional bid to disrupt the election. In Salt Lake City, officer has been charged with a felony after ordering a canine to bite a black man. The Trump administration is trying to keep the census documents a secret. And Bill Barr wanted to arrest Seattle's mayor over the Black Lives Matter protests. The attorney general also reportedly asked for protesters to be charged with sedition. And running the November numbers. Let's get to the news. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome to The Rundown. I am your host, Captivating Christian, and this afternoon will be a little bit different. Because it's Friday, I figured let's let our hair down, at least some of us, right? And just basically talk about the articles that I have here on the docket for the midday news for the day. So, in trying something new and a little different... Let's get started. So our first article of the day is about the Postmaster General Louis DeJoy, right? So a federal judge has basically ordered Louis DeJoy to put a halt on the nationwide operational changes to the Postal Service. He said it is clear that the Postmaster General's efforts to intentionally disrupt and challenge the legitimacy of this election. So pretty much in layman's terms, that judge was like, You stupid. And then he turned around and was like, Gotcha, bitch. So, basically, the judge said, oh, hell no, you're not doing it, not on my watch. Um, It's clear that you are trying to do this to affect this upcoming election, and I'm not having it. So, you can go about your business, and if you don't cut it out, I'll put you up on charges. However, unfortunately, at this time, some of the damage has already been done. So, Lord knows, um, you know, what's going to be the outcome of this. But, like I said, that federal judge is not playing with the Postmaster General. And what he basically, lasting message was... Well, that comes under the category of too bad. So, better luck next time on trying to rig an election. Find another way. You might want to call the Russians. I've heard they helped you the first time. They might be willing to help you out again. So, um... Yeah, but actually, I mean, I feel good about it. At least we know that there's some people in in the uh, Justice Department still holding on to decency and not letting things get past them. So, you know, it sucks for President Trump. But I'm sure that he is trying the very best he can to make sure that he finds, you know, another avenue to steal this election. So, we'll see. Keep our eyes and ears open, people. In this particular story, sometime back I did this story about a police officer in Salt Lake City, Utah, that had been charged. First, he came out for a call, a domestic call. Um, It was an argument between, I guess, a boyfriend and girlfriend, husband and wife, and he was coming in to uh, get his change of clothes, but she wound up calling the police because I think he had to work, but he seemed like, you know, a little bit inebriated, but he was trying to get in the house to get his work clothes, so he said. So he was around back when they actually found him, and they asked him to lay on the ground or they were going to get the dog to attack him and he you know complied he laid on the ground put his hands on his head and they still sent the dog after him and then he kept and you know like praising the dog to keep on biting keep on biting and lo and behold the uh gentleman wind up actually having major injuries due to his legs even 
maybe having a surgery or even amputation of his leg. That's how bad the injuries from this dog and the dog's, you know, pressure from his um, jaws and everything. So this Salt Lake police officer has now been charged with aggressive assault once the video shows him ordering the canine to attack the black man in his own yard. The charges is a second degree felony according to the Salt Lake City District Attorney's Office. Now to that, of course, we can always, 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 always applaud the good work of the people that do things when it's worth doing because when you do you stupid stuff like that it's just dumb and you should be able to uh, be put up on charges all officers should be brought up on charges and for aggressive behavior or behavior that is outside of the lines of your duties as a police officer to protect and serve because that was totally ridiculous um you can go back on one of my previous uh midday newses and you can see this um particular story and the video itself of the dog um, basically being praised for continuously attacking the man as he laid on the ground uh, screaming for help. Uh, so, you know, just as much as, you know, they enjoy getting a perpetrator, we enjoy when the people who are in, you know, areas of authority get put back in their places and it makes us feel all so great so we can tell that cop and pretty much he can go about his business and enjoy his time um you know in the court system now i'm not you know wishful thinking that the charges will actually stick and he will get some kind of jail time but just the simple fact that he was being such a that I am so glad that eventually maybe hopefully they will begin to see that they cannot continuously do stuff to us and it be okay you know um, so you know you got to start somewhere so hopefully maybe he gets a charge Let's see, let's hope, let's keep our fingers crossed. All right. And in this particular article, of course, it's about the who else but, but the Trump administration is trying to get a federal judge to help him shield thousands of internal documents about the 2020 census from the public. More than 8,800 records plus undisclosed number due for release this week documents the administration's controversial move to cut the census by the end of September rather than its planned schedule date for October 31st. Now, again, we are dealing with this particular president that we know is crooked and although 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 we know at the same time he is always like to say that everything is you are fake news right we know it's not fake and we know that he will do anything to help him stay in power once you gave him the power because y'all wanted to look the other way or some of you was just so upset that a black man happened to be in the White House that you would do anything to make it white again. Oh wait, so you wanted it so bad to be white again that you just let anybody like the lures of Donald Trump into the White House. So you let him into the White House, now you get to the point where you can't get rid of him. Something like herpes or some kind of nasty, non-curable, sexually transmitted disease. Right, so here we are. <laughs> And yet you stuck with him. So you, you pretty much stuck with him at least until November 3rd. And now he's trying to make sure that the people who may wind up kicking him out don't even get representation that they can control the entire uh, map 
of the electoral college and anything else by fixing it by covering up the census. That's why he cut it short anyway. He cut it, it was supposed to be the end of October. He's cutting it to the end of September. They won't complete it. So it, will, it won't be completed. They won't be able to count everybody, which means communities will be underfunded. The representation will not be there. So a lot of these uh, legislators, mostly Republican, will be able to not only stay in power, but regain more power because then they'll do some redistrict, redistricting. Excuse me. Now, of course, Democrats do redistricting as well. Uh, but in this day and age, Republicans are hungry for power. I mean, they are starving to maintain and keep their power. So, Again, we just need to be mindful that stuff is really happening and people will go to any lengths to keep their power. So, you know, just be mindful. Wake up, okay? And don't be so sleep that you um, miss this because this is just as important. The census, and if you haven't filled out your census, please go to the census.org, fill it out. It only takes about 10 minutes, if that, um, to actually fill it out and be counted. People, be counted. Hey, this is Captain Raiden Christian here to remind you to tune in to Politics and Wellness every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Politics and Wellness every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. You never know what you might get. In this particular article, it looks like the U.S. Attorney General William Barr, otherwise known as AKA Fred Flintstone, Wright has asked the Justice Department in to consider bringing charges against Seattle's mayor, Jenny Dunker, over her handling of the protesters earlier this year, during which the uh, police, they made a police-free zone. That's when they allegedly uh, got into a police station and barricaded the area around it and made it a police free zone to keep demonstrators on one side and law enforcement on the other, right? Um, personally, I think it was an inside job because how could regular citizens be able to get into the police station? But that's neither here nor there. I'll save that for another time. But anyway, Bill Barr uh, made calls to the Justice Department prosecutors in the Civil Rights Division to kind of see if they could bring charges up against the mayor, who is a Democrat, the mayor in Seattle. However, she is also a former attorney. So how did you think that was going to get by her and be okay is beyond me. But I guess when you think you know it all, you just do whatever you do. But I think that was a move on your part um but anyway he tried it so along with that however he also was trying to see if they can actually get protesters uh charged with sedition now what sedition is is basically it's a huge crime it's a crime against unlike treason which is the crime against the government it's almost second to it um it is the crime again. Uh, so, you know, you could go to jail for a long time for something like that. That has not happened in many, many years. But um, the fact that he would even bring this up for protesters, he said it was protesters who were inciting violence, is, is what he said. It would only be used for protesters who was inciting violence. But you could clearly see from the footage of how even the media portrays it, they always portray that there are people of color inciting the violence. Even so, that people were at protests showing on video real time that it was not the protesters who was creating the vandalism. It was actually people who were trying to make the protesters look like they were being vandal. Uh, they were, you know, vandalizing certain areas and things um, to draw attention to it. See, see, look, look, see what they're doing. Um, so it's crazy. Uh, and, I, and I 
more and more you get to see that they are really trying to uh, bring back or even erect this um, Hitler style, this new age Hitler, like this 2020 kind of German, Germany uh, Nazi regime. Oh, thing hell no! Because that's all it takes. All it takes is some people in power to kind of move the puzzle pieces around. And next thing you know, we're looking at a totally different nation. And slowly but surely, if we don't stop this on November 3rd, this is just what you're going to get. You have the Justice Department who is supposed to be separated from the executive branch and really checking the executive branch to make sure that they are following the guidelines and laws of the Constitution and the land overall that uh, he'll do anything to cover up whatever Trump is doing and to go along uh, with the program which is dangerous in and of itself. So seriously, seriously, in all seriousness, this is very serious. Because at this point, they're basically saying that you can even use your right to free speech and to assemble in protest uh, to anything. Um, they're trying to squash your voices. And be sure to join Jay Wilson, Rebel Sun, the official King Pain, Conscious TV, and Captivating Christian this and every Thursday at 6.45 Central Standard Time, 7.45 Eastern Standard Time for the Gentleman's Panel. But we are not afraid to go there and discuss an array of topics. See you there. All right, and in this last article, to take the Senate, Democrats need to win five out of the 12 competitive races this year and also take the vice presidency, which is the tie-breaking seat uh, for, Senate, uh, for the Senate because the vice president is a, will be a sitting senator and they break the tie if, in fact, they become deadlocked. However, yesterday was some good, 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 good news for uh, three Senate polls, right? The Democrat nominee have held a significant lead in Maine and Arizona, which is all good news. And in South Carolina, a heavy Republican state, the race between Senator Lindsey Graham, otherwise known as AKA Lady G, and we all know that he is very Okay, girl. Uh, so that's a heavy, heavy race. And right now, it's looking pretty tight for Lindsey Graham. His challenger, of course, Democratic uh, challenger Jamie Harrison, is tied right now. So what does all this mean for um, Democrats as a whole? Great news. What does this mean for some Republicans? All oh, shit and bricks. Because if... God forbid. All right, let's just pray real tight. But if, in fact, Trump was to win, say hypothetically he did win re-election, right? Legitimately. But we hope not because nobody wants him as president for another four years. But if he did, hypothetically speaking, and we had the Senate and uh, Congress stayed the same as far as the House, would be smooth sailing. So anything he would do, they would definitely put him up on charges for impeachment. Now, hopefully they would stick, you know, because you know how this whole thing works. It's so shady boots, you never know. But if it did, then he could be held accountable and, you know, things can move as well. But we hope that doesn't happen. Even if the even if he does not get reelected and we can still get the Senate and keep the House, we'll definitely be in a good place to actually regain some order and bring some uh, bring some calm back to this crazy, crazy, crazy administration in these last four years. Because I don't know about you, but I'm just like, 
no yeah we can't do this again no way in the world like it was fun it was great while it lasted you can take your goddamn attorney general you can go kick rocks with no socks i am done with him i'm done with all of them um because they just it, it's just not it's not american i just want to be able to on november 4th know that he is no longer president he can start packing his shit and then everybody could just be like hey hey Oh, get it. Oh, because that's what I'm going to do come November 4th. Okay, thanks. And once again, thank you for watching CCN Midday News. Hope you enjoyed. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that notification button so you will never miss another news update. Have a great day. Peace.